No matter what digital medium or film, you know, whatever you're working on, you still have to go through that same process. And that's what some people don't understand. Some people think just because you can execute quickly that therefore you can make the presentation more quickly, you can cut it faster. And it's really not true because you really, as you know, you really need to think about what it is you're doing and how you're going to make those edits come together and what it is you're going to present and what's the emo I mean, all the different characteristics of what you're doing still take the same thought time. You can't, you can't shortcut that. And when you do, you know, it's, it shows. My personal feeling is that performance is king, or queen, as the case may be. But that's always the, the guiding principle. You can put up with people, the audience will, will give you a lot of benefit. You know, they'll let you slide on a lot of stuff if they're involved in the performance. Something that's fluid and going nicely, but somebody says something that just sticks in their craw, doesn't really uh, ring true, they're going to they're gonna take you to task for that a lot more than they'll take you to task for a jump cut. If he had the cigar in his mouth or he didn't or the hand was here or there. So I would say you must always, always use the performance as your guide and let the audience be drawn in by that. And if you're successful at that, I don't think you have to worry about the other stuff too much. I always make sure I have a couch far away as I can with a place for them to put their feet up. It's a little pet peeve of mine. I never tell the director. I don't like it when somebody puts their feet up on the Avid on, next to my uh, keyboard. That really bothers me. So I've learned now to put a monitor where they can view the whole cut, a big TV over here, a little stool for their feet, comfy chair, and I'm over here. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Being on the set to me is really boring. I mean, basically, because I'm not working when I'm there. I'm just kind of hanging out, watching. And, and, and there are times when you go to the set, possibly with a scene, and you, and you look at it at lunchtime with the director, the producer, or sometimes an actor, and discuss whether or not uh, a piece, or something could be shot to enhance the story or, or enhance the, uh, the information that we're getting from the scene. And that happens once in a while, but not, but not that often. So, uh, the director's vision is what we as editors are trying to fulfill and trying to bring out. And that's our job and our craft and our talent. That's what we want to do. So I usually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, impose myself until I've seen what the director is presenting. And this is probably the most uh, intense collaboration that I've had on a movie uh, with my assistant and with the director. And the way it worked out was, it was obviously, we talked about, there's a lot of footage to get through. And as an editor, you're always nervous. You want to get to the end and make sure you get everything cut by the time the director comes back from shooting. So, so you've got it all you know, done, and you can move on. And, and when you get overwhelmed with so much footage, you say, oh, I'm never going to get through this. So uh, as often happens, I would, got my assistant, Trissy Bowers, at the time. And, and I, I gave her a lot of stuff to cut. And she eventually became my co-editor on this. And we got to this end. We said, we have all this material. Charles is coming back. What are you going to do? I said, OK, look, I'll be the A&T guys. You take the Morris Brown. <laughs> and we'll battle it out in the Battle of the Bands and see who wins. So that's what we did. The more you edited this stuff, the more you could edit it. Because every time you, you accented something with an edit, and there was the, the I almost said brush stroke, but there was the stroke of the drumstick or, or, the, or the swing of the drum or whatever, you know, trying to make it smooth, you, could, you found, oh, there was another place to go. It was, there was another deeper place inside there. And, you know, you might get the, you know, the drum roll and then the stick. And then there was just so many fine points you could make. And it was a lot of fun trying to, trying to bring. And every time we do it, we thought we brought it all out. We'd show it to Charlie and say, what is this? Where's the thing where the guy goes like that? And where's this? And we're, oh, OK. Get back in there and pull it out. So it was really a, a lot of fun to do. We are charged with making that narrative make sense and have the audience be clear and have them follow it. And it has to, has to be you know, linear or somehow make sense before you can chop it all up and, and break the rules. So that the, but the audience always has to be with it. And that's always a challenge. And we, we often, as editors, get to do that. And uh, that's like one of the last stages where the, 
the story can be either salvaged or made better or brought out or polished or whatever our level is. So um, I recently worked on a film at post Wars called Day Zero, which uh, was shown at Tribeca. And that was a film about some young men who were uh, imagine that the draft is reinstated and in 30 days they get, they get their notice in 30 days they have to go for the draft and how do they deal with that 30 days leading up to it. And it was a, it was a situation where the, the script had many, many, many scenes. Way too many scenes. Way too many scenes. And they were all great. And the writer, who was a producer, so he was in the editing room several times, was very fond of all of those scenes, as, though, as many writers are, and they don't want to lose anything. And the result was the reason why the film wasn't really making enough narrative sense, and us, the film audience, was not engaged enough in the movie because it was all over the place. And so we were charged with trying to condense it and somehow give that narrative more focus at the same time maintaining the writer's vision and the director's vision. And um, I like to think that was one case where we successfully did that, took something that looked like somebody just took all the cards and threw them up in the air, and we sort of gave it a little more focus. So that was, it's kind of satisfying when you, when you get to do something like that.